Hello, everyone. Today is Saturday, April 29th, 2023. I am Christy Bird McKeeve, the CEO of Healthy Rural California and Executive Director for Butte Glen Medical Society and North Valley Medical Association in Reading. Uh, we are um, doing so much. So I thought I'd better just record this as an update and um, see if I can get it out to the medical community uh, and um, <laughs> go from there. Uh, uh, I have a first an update on the psychiatry residency. And again, so much enthusiasm and so much support um, since 2019, when we said, yes, we're going to start a psychiatry residency and make it happen. And then in February, just a few short months ago, we received initial accreditation from ACGME uh, then uh, the last week, we received an email from ACGME with the three citations of what they recommend that we work on in order to successfully launch the um, psychiatry residency accreditation. Um, so again, there's the accreditation, the academic side of things, and then there's the whole business uh, side of things as well. So that psychiatry residency um, those citations will be shared with the GME committee, which meets on Wednesday morning, May 3rd. Um, and uh, they meet quarterly at this time. When the residents come on board, the GME committee will meet probably monthly in order to ensure that the lines of communication um, between the residents, the faculty, uh, up to the DIO, the designated institutional official, who is Dr. Zordling, so that he can um, understand what, if there's any problems that exist and also helping move uh, forward with the education of these future medical residents. The first cohort arrives for psychiatry in 2024. So we are actively recruiting and doing um, medical student rotations. I've often used, uh, heard the word used uh, auditions. And so those are underway. We are developing our RS profile and setting that all up because that opens up September 15th, I think it is, um, so that then the medical students seeking a psychiatry residency can have the option to apply through RS. Um, and then from September to March of next year, then the applications will come in. We'll have a, a selection committee. We're in the process of setting that up. Uh, we just met yesterday, actually, with Kawea Health District in Visalia, uh, Dr. Baga, Dr. Sandu, um, I think Michelle is the program coordinator's name, and just a fantastic team of people. They've basically opened up their residency program to us so that we can understand um, how to best launch ourselves. And uh, so that was, it's always fun. Dr. Baga is um, a very wonderful personality, and I applaud them because they have set up what I think are some of the most fair uh, practices. Um, you know, when you get a bunch of applications and they can receive, you know, uh, 400 or more and then have to whittle down to who they think will be the best residents in their program. Uh, so we'll be doing the same. And we've already started on that path by having medical students rotating, um, but thanks to the Compadre Network, at uh, UC Davis and Oregon State Health University. Um, and that's through the leadership of Dr. Rachel Mitchell as well. So much going on in that medical school space, but today I really just wanna focus on the psychiatry residency and then talk about the family medicine residency. So I think in this moment with psychiatry, it's both the excitement of, uh, you know, just, getting out there and being accredited and starting to uh, bring in that first class. Uh, but then we're also balancing out a very serious conversation with our partners at Butte County to best understand a $1.8 million award that we partnered on in 2020 and <laughs> knew so little. And this is a state award. Um, and I can tell that from 2020 to um, but last year um, that the state has learned a lot about the ACGME accreditation process. And uh, so just trying to figure out this 2020 award 
um, which goes to the county and then how we can ensure that um, we have maximum uh, reimbursement from all that we've done in this space at Healthy Rural California, uh, while also um, acknowledging that as sort of the pass through and fiscal oversight of this award, the county deserves uh, their fair share as well. I mean, that's all, that's not in um, dispute at the moment, but it is complicated because the grant terms were not clearly defined in 2020. We had, we all both had staff turnover. And um, so anyway, there's just a, a matter of getting that resolved and moving forward. Our team is preparing all of the um, invoices and expenses and receipts that we're um, needing to show proof of costs of all that we've done since 2019. Um, well, actually November, 2020, when this award went into effect. Um, but not to linger on that, I do believe we'll have resolution of that uh, by the end of the month. Um, but uh, so family medicine. So through all of the work of the of the psychiatry residency, but also in 2019, you know, our our clear direction was to address access to care, um, and then set, start up the psychiatry residency, and then sort of through that process, getting really excited about the feasibility of a family medicine residency, and that is feasible, and it is happening, um, and uh, we are very close to submitting our application for accreditation. Uh, in May and June. Um, very excited about that. Our primary hospital is Enlo Medical Center, and um, they are um, a wonderful partner. They are GME naive, which is actually a strength, uh, but there's certain things that need to, to go into place in order to um, best utilize that GME naiveness. <laughs> um, but it also makes, and this is understandable, it makes it a little bit challenging to understand why we need to have, say, a program letter of agreement signed uh, that goes into this application. Why do we need to have that done now? Um, so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time on the process. So it is possible to submit this application in May and June and get to a uh, accreditation in early 2024, which would enable us to literally start our first cohort in 2024. Lots of decisions, lots of discussions since January. And um, while we still wanna submit this application for accreditation in May and June of 2023, we've all begun to realize that the first cohort would not matriculate until 2025. So we're still needing to get the application in. Um, and I will use the psychiatry residency as that parallel description of why we want to extend the matriculation date a year to 2025. Um, and that is because it will, will enable us to do a full year of recruiting and getting into the ERA system in September of 2024 so that we can get to match day 2025. If you bump that up a year as we were sort of thinking we might be able to do, we probably still could, but if we get accreditation in February of 2024, <laughs> my dates are getting, it is Saturday after all. Um, if we got accredited in, in January or February, 2024, let's just say, mat the match system is still open. RS is still open and functional. Um, we could even do the SOAP application, which is about a, a week after the match day happens in March, um, and we could still get a, a great first cohort to start in 2024. But, um, you know, the first cohort really is important, um, and we want to make sure that we are doing uh, medical student rotations and auditions and getting that word out and um, and really then having the selection committee uh, focus in on the very students that we want to um, to have on board. And, um, and also giving the chance for faculty to do faculty development. But the key part of this really is that for Enlo Medical Center to be the primary hospital for the family medicine residency, which is moving forward and we actually have the vast majority of, of those pieces of that puzzle put together. 
Um, I will say that um, we are still seeking a continuity clinic and that continuity clinic, uh, you know, th three um, uh, clinics just closed in Chico in the last few months. Uh, so well, actually, the part of the thing, part of the reason I'm working this weekend is I need to reach out to Northern Valley Indian Health. We really do want to partner with them, and we think that there's some really good rotations there. Uh, but that if they could find a way to be the continuity clinic, it would be uh, amazing. And I think it really would be the best um, sort of resident. Like the residents will really be will really gravitate to. Enlo Medical Center is the primary hospital, having all of the specialists and the different required uh, rotations. Um, we're lining up that faculty uh, and then having Northern Valley Indian Health as the continuity clinic. I think it's a very strong residency program. So just some more things that we need to iron out. Uh, and Dr. Schroll is the program director. Dr. Debbie Lupeka from the Shasta Community Health Center is operating as assistant associate program director only as like a consultative role um, and providing that mentorship for Dr. Schroll. Um, so uh, it's a great team and we're going forward, but here's, here's the thing. Enlo Medical Center can't enter into this without looking at the full picture of all GME, because even if they were just to say, okay, we'll sign off on the family medicine um, a program letter of agreement and submit this application and will we uh, commit to doing this family medicine residency what that actually does is it triggers the cap and for those who've heard this before forgive me i'm just going to explain it for those who haven't um, cms reimbursement rates have this archaic byzantine rule which says that um, any new hospital has five years once the first resident steps in which again, we're deciding will be in 2025 for family medicine. That will be the first resident coming into Enlo. And from 2025 to 2030, then Enlo has to get all of the residents that are possibly going to be um, uh, rotating or having them as a primary hospital, or even if Enlo decides to do, um, to become a sponsoring institution themselves, all of that would have to happen mostly within these five years. The good news is that all of the residency um, sort of when the, uh, it's like a sample where you put into the snow or the, the dirt to see all the different layers. Uh, that's the visual in my mind, so stick with me on this. But let's just say we have psychiatry residents going to uh, Enlo. We'll have the family medicine residents. Uh, and then any other possible residents. And that 2030 date that CMS um, chooses, uh, the five-year cap, um, they'll, they'll take a sample of all of the residents that are in the facility at that time, and that will be their maximum number of uh, reimbursements that CMS will provide for. So it really does behoove Enlo Medical Center to... Um, really commit to family medicine, but also truly understand all that they are cap capable of having in the future. And so Healthy Row California has gotten sponsorship from um, Partnership Health Plan to provide what's called an initial feasibility, I think it's an evaluation, um, but anyway, it's a study to really look at Enlo from family medicine to possibly internal medicine to general surgery, anything else that might be viable to launch at Enlo Medical Center at any, you know, next 20, 50 years, and then put a strategy together um, so that between 2025 and 2030, um, Enlo Medical Center can launch those. Um, they, takes about a year plus to go through the sponsoring institution thing. So it's uh, possible that Healthy Row California will be the sponsoring institution for all of those potential uh, residency programs. Um, it's, it is something that will be concluded. It'll take about three months minimum um, to do that full study. So we'll, we're hopeful that we can have some more data for Enlo Medical Center this fall um, that will help them feel better about 
signing off on the family medicine residency application in May and June. Um, and I think that, you know, $60,000 worth of funding from Healthy Rural California and Partnership Health Plan is, um, is a good gesture of, you know, goodwill and partnership and wanting NLO to be successful. In this space, I want to be really clear about how firm we have to be and then how fluid we can be over time. And I started noodling around on this over the last few days as a decision-making tree, which is a, you know, typical term I think that we all use, you know, how do you move through the decision-making process and what branches do you take? But I actually am going to say it's a decision-making river. Bear with me. You guys must know me by now that I'm always looking at things in a different way, but it really is fluid, right? Um, Healthy Rural California is accredited to be a sponsoring institution, which enables us to become accredited for specialty residencies. And we have to go through the whole application process to, to get accredited. And then the accreditation never ends. We are constantly going to be rewriting program letters of agreement, which are the academic agreements between the clinical facilities and primary hospitals um, and Healthy Rural California. And those those are always going to change in the business agreements as well. Um, dollar amounts change. You can't say that a dollar today is going to be equivalent to a dollar in 10 years time. And there's net present, net present value and all sorts of MBA stuff noodling around in my head about when I say that stuff. But, um, you know, but also, you know, if we sign that Dr. Schroll is you know, the program director, um, guess what? You know, she might retire in 15 years. I'm no, no, Dr. Schroll, I'm not, <laughs> um, making a statement about your age or anything like that. I'm just doing some examples. I'm going to retire in eight years. I'll be very clear about that. Um, but, you know, right, Dr. Schroll, program director, retires. Do you know how much paperwork we're going to have to do at Healthy Rural California? on this family medicine residency to ensure that we are still um, compliant with ACGME guidelines, right? Or, or a faculty member or somebody's a core faculty for the family medicine, the psychiatry residency, and they move out of the area. Well, we have to update the paperwork. So all of these agreements can change. And to ENLO and anyone at ENLO that is having second doubts about about this, hopefully that this feasibility study that will be conducted at some time in the next few months will have that data that will prepare you for, you know, maximum CMS reimbursement rates, which will drive revenue, and then having residents seeing more patients under the purview of your faculty, which will enable you to, to also drive more reimbursement rates. It is a revenue plus, and um, that portion of the discussion will always be an open door. Um, and then Dr. Lupeka just offered yesterday morning to bring anyone from Enlo up to Reading. Reading has two family medicine residency programs. The FQHC, that is Shasta Community Health Center, is one. And then across the street at Dignity Health, Mercy Medical, uh, they have a secondary one. And between those two programs, there are 29 family medicine residents in Reading. And then down the street, Shasta Regional Medical Center just got accredited for internal medicine. Interestingly enough, their sponsoring institution is in Southern California. It's the same group that manages their hospital. And so, but, you know, I say that because that's great that they figured out a way to bring internal medicine to, to Reading. It's fantastic. Um, and I think about Chico and all of the community work that we have done to keep everything in Butte County and build this consortium model through Healthy Rural California. And I'm just gonna say, Healthy Rural California has been chosen by the community in Chico and Butte County to uh, be the sponsoring institution. And so it's just slightly different. It's a different shade of blue. Blue is my favorite color. Anyway, um, and so, but thank you, Dr. Lupeka for inviting Enlo Medical Center folks up to to Reading to see how profitable residency programs can be. Um, and in that vein, just stating this, the psychiatry residency is gonna be funded by teaching health center funding. 
And then our goal at this point with Enlo as the primary hospital for family medicine, that that would be funded by CMS reimbursement rates, which will ultimately help Enlo Medical Center. Um, and then a portion of those dollars will come to Healthy Rural California and Healthy Rural California will pay the residents, their salaries, their benefits, their um, stipends, their technology. Um, and then, of course, the faculty should get stipends as well. And that dollar amount is a minimum of $100 per day um, for teaching. And we're still trying to figure out the details. We can't pay what we don't have money to pay for, pay, pay for. So all of that does have to be ironed out in the wash. Um, so back to this decision-making river, um, you know, Enlo may go on this 2025 to 2030 strategic plan and start rolling out all of the residency programs with Healthy Rural California as the sponsoring institution. That is what we're here for. And we are more than happy to embark on that path. Um, it would it would expedite their their five year cap plan um, because they wouldn't Enlo wouldn't have to take that year plus to become a sponsoring institution and go down that path. However, it is possible. Let's just say in ten years time, it is twenty thirty four. I'll be retired. Um, <laughs> 2034, and Enlo Medical Center is much more like gets the whole GME thing and has much more finances and sort of, you know, this marriage between Healthy Rural California and Enlo Medical Center has proven positive. Um, maybe there's other funding that's coming into the hospital. And somebody says and makes the decision that they want Enlo Medical Center to become the sponsoring institution for family medicine. And I'm just gonna use that because that is the place that we're in right now in 2024, 2023, getting ahead of myself. So it is possible that at that time, Enlo Medical Center works on becoming the sponsoring institution and then we agree, like every single year, we are checking in, we are saying, okay, what's working, what's not? Um, Healthy Rural California is sponsoring institution for psychiatry, we got this going on, we got that going on. Um, and then we think the family medicine residency would be stronger because Enlo is gonna become a sponsoring institution, their primary care clinic has gone in these great new directions and could be the continuity clinic. Who knows, right? Our crystal balls can only predict like, I don't even know, a day in advance. <laughs> but at that time, then Healthy Rural California would say, okay, well, our family medicine residency is still really strong and viable, and the primary hospital is still Enlo, but Enlo wants to create their own. And then we shift some of the rotations to different areas. Uh, we have a great partnership with the VA, maybe the VA in Chico, uh, has expanded their behavioral health offerings as well as Ample Health in Chico. And so the psychiatry residency has like a different shape to it as well. Um, fluid Fluidity over time is possible. You know, the things that we have to lock in right now for family medicine really just have to be locked in place for 12 months, possibly a little bit longer, just depending on how far the accreditation, re, how, how much we're meeting the ACGME deadlines for accreditation and their review committee meetings and their agendas and all of that. And um, when we submit the application in May and June of this year, then we have a site visit sometime in the fall, typically, and then we receive initial accreditation sometime in this early spring of 2024. And then, you know, that those checks and balances, ACGME has to say, okay, you submitted X, Y, and Z in your application in May and June of 2023, and we want to talk to the faculty, we want to make sure that the, the uh, facilities are going to meet the ACGME requirements to house residents to have residents rotating on the facilities, things like you need to have a refrigerator for breast milk in case a resident is nursing. 
Um, you need to have bathrooms. You need to have a shower or accessibility to a shower in case the residents are, you know, working um, in a certain time frame where they need to take a shower or they've had some sort of, you know, need to um, clean. Lots of reasons. There's, a, there's, they're not onerous. The requirements of ACG for space and facilities is not onerous. Um, and I think most of, we've done plenty of site visits now between the psychiatry residency and the family medicine residency. Every single site is possible. Maybe a little bit of tweaking here and there needs to be done, but for the most part, it's just basically saying, you know, we need the residents to have access to the same things that your doctors would have. So um, not onerous, but ACGME will want to um, confirm that what we put in the application is actually what um, we're, we're committing to and committing to for the residents in the future. So there's a period of time that things have to be rigid in order to get through the accreditation process. But, you know, like once initial accreditation is garnered, then, you know, actually more movement happens. Again, I'll use psychiatry as an example. We are still defining the electives. So for the application, we didn't have to define the fourth year of the curriculum any more than just listing where we thought the opportunities would be. But now we need to define what those electives are so that our residents, future residents can choose, oh my gosh, that sounds really interesting. I'm excited to be with Dr. Maj at um, the new cancer center at Enlo Medical Center uh, for my month rotation in year four. That sounds so great. Um, so we have to define that. So right, we're still actually defining the curriculum even though we did receive initial accreditation. So speaking of Dr. Mosh though, right? If we move forward with that, then there would be the potential of um, one to four psychiatry residents to be on Enlo Medical Center's facilities. Uh, that would be year four, so 2028, which falls within the 2025, 2030 five-year strategy to reach their cap, which is a bonus. So actually, we don't have a program letter of agreement for the psychiatry residency with Enlo, but because Healthy Rural California will have the psychiatry residents, and then year four, they'll be possibly with Dr. Maj at Enlo, those residents will have help toward their cap, Enlo's cap. I hope this all makes sense. It's very clear in my head, <laughs> um, but it all works together. And I think the main point is that we need to submit the family medicine application in May and June, like next two months. We're so close. We're actually finalizing program letters of agreements with the different facilities. Uh, we just have to sort of figure out the continuity clinic, which is essential. Um, and um, we're really close. We've been doing lots of different conversations for months and months. So I feel confident that by the end of June, we'll have a very strong and compelling curriculum and application in place. Um, and the GME committee would need to approve of this application. So they meet May 3rd, but that's okay. We can communicate with them and get their votes of approval by email. That actually gives them a chance to um, actually read, read, and they actually do read both the common application and the specialty application word for word, bless their hearts, most of them do. Um, and uh, so the family medicine residency application, getting that in with the goal of matriculation of the first cohort in 2025, is actually feeling really, really good. And I real, feel really good about our support of Enlo Medical Center to make sure that not just entering into family medicine, but not triggering the cap um, inadvertently, we're, we're really financially supporting them in that effort. And the last beat, piece of that is that we do know that Enlo is going to have to have some costs associated with facility changes. Again, minor, they're not, you know, you don't have to build a whole new tower for the residents. Gosh, no, it's it's just kind of 
shifting around a couple of things and um, that I've been looking at our grant monies. And I think we at Healthy Real California can offer about $10,000 to Enlo to, to make sure that that facility is um, up to speed. Um, if we need to have some other funding though, in order for the continuity clinic um, at a different organization, um, I'll have to think about that it just occurred to me. Um, so all do stay tuned. I cannot wait to announce the family medicine residency um, plans, final plans, and all of the faculty. We're doing scholarly activity. The QI symposium at Enlo on May 10th is an absolutely wonderful scholarly activity that all faculty can list. Um, it's not necessarily on the faculty CV, but we have to enter that manually into the system that ACGME runs called ADS, our best friends. Um, we love ADS. Uh, it's very clunky. It's very cumbersome. Um, and you can't just like take a CV and upload the PDF. You literally have to go in and enter certain things about each faculty member. Um, and But happily enough, the QI symposium meets that criteria perfectly. Uh, and I want to get over and see the posters that are in the park. It's wonderful. Elisa Chavez has joined um, our Healthy Road California team and is um, the Family Medicine Program Coordinator. Um, Oh my gosh, am I, I just, we just hired Isabella as well as an administrative assistant. So uh, we, we've really expanded our um, our team. So if I got mixed up on names, I'm so sorry. We're doing so much all of a sudden. Our HPPP grants, Rachel Sanchez has just really done a phenomenal job of going after grants and making some new programs happen. The HPPP is an actual award from the state of California, and it is going to provide up to 20 stipends for um, students on the pathway to becoming a nurse or becoming a doctor. Um, we had a certain number of applications submitted. They are supposed to support the, uh, um, the student's journey like specifically if they're doing like a clinical rotation this summer or our medical students coming to the area to um, rotate and audition for our future residency programs. Uh, the stipends are $4,250 each, which is amazing and wonderful. Uh, with our medical students that come to the area, they oftentimes need housing and we're looking to have hosts who wouldn't mind having a student live with them for two weeks or a month. And uh, we just heard yesterday from North State College of Medicine that their students would be in the area for six weeks. Um, so, uh, you know, but that there's only so much free support, right? It's much better to say, here's $4,250 medical student interested in psychiatry. Um, and you get to spend that money on housing. Um, so uh, that's a, a good way. It's a good complement to our work um, in the medical education space, but it's also really important for nursing students who are needing to do clinical uh, rotations in order to meet their curriculum requirements. Um, so that's exciting. Literally this weekend, I think Rachel is um, honing down the applicant list so that next week we can select the final um, winners of those stipends. So cool. Can't believe we are actually providing stipends to people. It's amazing. So much other good stuff to share. Um, I am going to meet with two architectural firms in the next coming weeks. Um, it, because the Rural Health Innovation Center really is needing to come to fruition. If we look at um, just the medical residents, it's at least 28 just for psychiatry and family medicine, but the potential of two more residency programs, the internal medicine and general surgery would be 52. 52 residents. Now think about this, those four 
residencies will all need their own didactics and they typically meet, and this is what we've been designing in our curricula, um, and they meet once a week for half a day. So they get their four hours of required didactics that are weekly, I mean, literally forevermore, will have four groups meeting and doing their didactics. And some of those didactics will overlap, especially like psychiatry and family medicine. How cool is that going to be? Um, but, you know, for the most part, they're actually separate cohorts needing to meet for half days and possibly with the um, UC Davis and Stanford didactics that, you know, sort of aligning with them and then they can stream in their didactics programs. Very exciting, but 52 residents, like, that's a lot. <laughs> 12 in each cohort and then 16 in the um, psychiatry cohort every single year. Uh, they need to meet and they need to study and they need to do uh, peer reviews and case studies and, you know, M&Ms or I think the M&Ms are the case studies. Anyway, it's, it's a lot. So we need to have a larger space that we can manage and own. And each residency program has to have at least one staff person. So that's four staff and there's usually more. And then the faculty have to come in and have a space to, you know, feel like they can work and do some, in, you know, private conversations with the residents. Maybe a resident is struggling to meet the, um, the, the milestones and has to be counseled. And you don't want them out in the middle of a busy conference room with people walking around. You need to have a private space for that. So there's, a bigger space that we need for that. We also are partnered with the Chico State School of Nursing and finding a bigger, better place for their rural sim center. Um, then creating this interprofessional learning space. Um, and we are also in talks with medical students. Um, at the very least, Toro University wants to send six students starting next summer to spend the entire year of their third year in our area, rotating at different places. Again, it's like the residents, they're gonna be out in the clinics, but in the hospitals, but they will need to come you know, on a regular basis to um, you know, meet with faculty or just have a hub that they can come to. Medical students actually have a bigger housing requirement as well. well. So uh, anyway, meeting with these architects in the coming weeks to really begin the planning of, you know, the final schematics of what we need in this area for interprofessional healthcare workforce education um, centered around the medical education work that Healthy Rural California is doing. Um, and it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. Um, just an idea around a tribal health medical school too. I don't know what that looks like. I honestly cannot imagine a standalone medical school and yet it's actually becoming more realistic in my mind as I have all these conversations. Um, and for me, a vision of a, a place and a dedicated effort to help educate all healthcare workforce in Northern California on what it means to work with the tribal communities and patients who, who um, you know, have, have a different um, perspective on healthcare, um, how to better um, reach this population, but also how to strengthen and improve health equity for the tribal communities um, and all, and you know, and everyone in this underserved um, region of Northern California. So there's some really great stuff <laughs> afloat. Do, do stay tuned and I cannot wait to announce the final curriculum for family medicine and all of our partners. Um, uh, and, and just hope, have our collective hope gathered um, as we seek accreditation for family medicine. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I am here working away, but I'm not communicating as much as I normally have in the past. And for that, I am very sorry because I love it. I love just keeping everybody connected and in the know. 
Um, but things are really moving quickly. Uh, and um, so it's hard to actually sit down and, and write something. But I am going to be producing the next edition of the uh, Advancing Health in Northern California magazine. I have so much of it already done. I just need to get it together and off to the designer. So, all right, you all take care and uh, keep on keeping on. <laughs>